how that is uh, then translates. Um, good. So the um, national funding, we've got a schools national funding formula and a high needs national funding formula. Um, both call LNF, but generally when we use NFF for short, we tend to refer to the schools one. Um, they are currently as what we call soft formulas, which is means that we we calculate allocation in respect of every school in a local authority. Then we add those allocations together and then we give them effectively to the local authority in the form of the dedicated schools grant. Um, the local authority then is able to redistribute that money uh, using their own lo local formula to the schools in their area, uh, you, um, which for academies becomes uh, the general annual grant, the GAG. Um, now, a lot of local authorities already mirror the NFF in their local formula, which means that effectively what we calculate through the NFF is what schools get through the GAG with some sort of general slight differences in data used, etc. But but broadly speaking, other local authorities use uh, different formulas that are, are sort of not quite mirroring the NFF. Um, and that means that there is a sort of slight more redistribution and, and difference compared to what we have allocated in the first instance uh, through the NFF. Um, so hopefully that's all clear. Um, so if I start, well, I'm going to talk a lot about the NFF and what we're planning on doing with that and changes on that. But first, I thought just a, a couple of general highlights uh, on where we are in 22-23 and 23-24 with uh, the core schools funding. Um, so the total amount that we have for core schools funding is uh, determined by the Treasury uh, through the spending review settlement. Now, core schools funding covers the NFF, so everything you get through the GAG, as well as pupil premium and a couple of other small uh, funding streams. Um, so we, we got uh, a, in November last year, 21, we got a three year settlement uh, that gave us a total of a seven billion increase over the three years. Um, and most of that was front loaded. So we're seeing a quite a significant increase in 22, 23. And then there will be further increases in the next two years, but they will be at a slightly uh, lower levels compared to the increase to 22, 23. Um, so I think obviously there will be a lot of difference between what this is compared to what, what does that translate to in terms of actual individual school budgets. But I think it is very useful to be aware of the context of where the money comes from and what the overall pot uh, looks like. Um, now, because we've got uh, additional funding for 22-23 compared to what we thought we would get, we had already set the NFF and everything that sort of allocates the money through the GAG. So we also got 1.2 billion as part of the 22-23 settlement, which we hadn't effectively allocated through the NFF. So we had to come up with a new way of allocating that separately. And so that's being allocated through the school supplementary grant, so which is going to be given in 22-23 uh, in addition to the GAG funding. And it, it's the only reason we're doing it that way this year is because we didn't know about the money until we'd already set uh, the NFF. Um, so uh, next slide, please. Thank you. So I understand that there are uh, a number of people have been asking questions about the school supplementary grant. Um, so it's given to uh, all schools on a financial year basis. So starting both academies and maintained school. So starting on the first of April, from the first of April uh, this year. Um, the first there will be for that financial year, 22-23, it will be paid in two instalments in June and uh, November. Um, academies will then be given an extra sort of lot of five to twelve of their 22-23 allocation to make sure that the sort of grant funding continues up until the start of the academic year, 23-24, when, when uh, this money will effectively have been rolled in through your next GAG allocation. Um, so you should all be getting this. So you'll be getting the GAG fund, sorry, supplementary grant funding in 22-23, as well as to bring you up to the start of the academic year, 23-24. Um, and then from 23-24 onwards, we are going to roll that funding into the um, into the core school, into the national funding formula. So which effectively means it's being rolled into your GAG. Uh, Sorry, I can 
can hear some noise in the background, but I'm not sure. Can people hear me? Yeah, yeah. yeah fine. OK, sorry, I will continue then. Thank you. Oh, lots of thumbs up. Lovely. Um, so. One very useful thing, I mean, we haven't said what the 23, 24 rates will be. You don't know what your gag allocation will be yet for that year. But one very useful thing to be aware of is that uh, you're going to see quite a significant increase in gag, which doesn't reflect that we are giving that much more money to you. It reflects that we are effectively rolling in what you're currently getting through the school supplementary grant into GAG as well. So you will not be getting the supplementary grant uh, in 23, 24. That will be sort of what you're now getting from both GAG and the supplementary grant is going to be rolled in together. So that's one uh, thing to be uh, very good to be aware of. So you're not sort of expecting the GAG increase on top of the supplementary grant again next year. Um, we are rolling it into the NFF and ultimately, uh, therefore, the gag in such a way that we're trying to make sure that schools get pretty much exactly what as close as possible through the gag as they would have got if we hadn't rolled it in, so that it is almost exactly rolled in, so no one loses out from the from the methodology of uh, rolling in. Um, I think that's the main thing I wanted to say on the supplementary grant. Obviously, happy at the end to answer any questions that come up. Uh, on that. Um, but so I think my next bit that I want to talk about first, though, is uh, the transition towards a direct NFF and what that sort of means for you on the on, on the ground from a school's perspective. Um, someone is asking if I am able to uh, respond to I, I can come in on if you want me to come in on questions on this first bit now, I can do that or we can take them all at the end. Sorry, maybe that message wasn't for me. Sorry. Um, unless anyone interrupts me, I will continue to do the next bit and then we'll take all the questions uh, at the end. So, right, can um, I have the next two slides, please? Perfect. So, as I mentioned before, when I talked about how NFF turns into GAG, um, this is a sort of schematic way that uh, shows the same thing. It shows we have the school's NFF, the high needs NFF, that goes to local authorities. Local authorities allocate the school's part um, of the DSG through their own local formula to mainstream schools. And the high needs is then also uh, allocated uh, separately by local authorities. Um, so that's what we're doing at the moment. Local authorities effectively take both of those badges, schools and high needs, and, and sort of allocate out at a local level. Uh, next slide, please. Yep, so what we're doing is we're not making any changes to high needs, because you can see the orange box for the high needs is, uh, is the same, so that will continue exactly as before. Um, what we are doing with it when we're talking about moving to a direct NFF is that we're effectively removing the local authority role in setting a local formula for the school's part. So it means that the funding that we are giving um, a local, sorry, the, the funding formula that we use for schools will directly inform the GAG for academies and obviously the equivalent funding for, for maintained schools. So what does it mean for academies? Well, the distribution, it means there will be a distributional impact because it means that all schools throughout the country are going to be funded on the same basis. Um, but in terms of when you are getting your money, how you are getting the money through and uh, through ESFA and, and those sort of things, that's there is no change to that at all. So there's nothing that you sort of need to proactively worry about that things are massively changing because we're changing the system from your end. It should look very similar. It's just that it's going to uh, affect the amount uh, that that is being given out. Um, so next slide, please. So why are we doing it? I think I already talked about it. It's about fairness that ultimately at the moment, uh, like a multi academy trust, for example, who is uh, operating academies across different local authorities, uh, can be allocated funding based on different formulas for all of their different academies. So this will be simpler to have one single formula. There is more certainty. There is, you know, it's very clear. It becomes more clear and predictable because every, everyone gets the same uh, amount of funding. Sorry, not same amount of funding. This funding based on the same uh, formula. 
Um, so uh, next, next slide, please. Brilliant. So um, some of this is more or less relevant for you. So I think it depends on how, how interested people are in the level of engagement. We would very, very, very much encourage you to to engage uh, with the current consultation we have. But if you're interested in in the in the first bit, then we just to give you the background that last year in March we um, sorry, not March last last year in I think it was July we we published a first consultation which was around you know the principle of doing this and and uh, some high level suggestions around how we're going to transition towards this. Uh, um, this new system and then in March we published uh, this year we published a response um, and that response confirmed that we are definitely you know, committed to introducing the direct NFF and that we will adopt a gradual approach to transitioning which is going to start um, in 23-24. When I say 23-24 obviously it's going to continue to be maintained schools uh, funded on a, a financial year basis 23-24 whereas academies is academic year 23-24. Uh, so and the next slide please. So what is it that we have confirmed that we are going to be doing? It is um, well so local authorities have to start moving their local formally closer to the NFF they have to start using every factor uh, in that we use in the national funding formula, um, except the premises factors which remain locally determined. They have to start for all of their existing factors, they have to move 10% closer to the NFF value. So it's very much a sort of gradual approach. Um, and it, we haven't set an end date for exactly when we are going to switch over to the direct NFF. Um, but what we have what we have said is we're going to see the effect of this first year of transitioning and then we'll sort of decide uh, the pace and progress from there on. Um, again, reassurance that while this will lead to some redistribution because look, we're all replacing 150 formula with with one um, or moving everyone at least closer to the one at the moment. Um, we are, you know, the, the minimum funding guarantee is going to continue to operate uh, and protect any schools that would be losing out uh, because of the change in the local formula uh, for them. Um, next slide, please. So, what we so that's what we've already announced. That's what we said we're going to do. In terms of what that means. For you in the first stage of transitioning, probably not much. Again, it will affect your actual gag allocations in the end. But in terms of the actual work of bringing it closer, that is very, very much just the job of local authorities who are going to be sort of working hard behind the scenes to sort of uh, to adapt the formulas. And we're going to provide hopefully lots of helpful guidance uh, to help them uh, to do so. But the thing that we I really wanted to flag and talk about is uh, the current um, the current consultation that we have launched. So it was launched on the seventh of June, and you have until 9th of September to uh, to respond. Um, and this goes into quite a lot of different technical aspects of um, of how we're going to implement the direct NFF. Um, now, some of this is also relatively sort of technical and it's related more to local authorities and how they operate and, and how we sort of replace the role that they currently currently have. But some of it will obviously absolutely very much directly impact uh, schools who are sort of on the receiving end on, on this. Um, so, for example, what we are going to do, I put here the bullets around things that we include. So some of it is around the interaction between the direct NFF and funding for high needs, and particularly around, you know, at the moment, local authorities can do block transfers and transfer uh, funding over from the schools block to the uh, high needs block in order to meet high needs funding pressures. Um, and obviously that will have to change uh, how that operates and, and how local authorities are going to meet new pressures. So again, because that effectively takes off funding from the school's uh, NFF allocation, so that effectively the school's gag amounts and it adds money on to the high needs amount, again, is something that very, very much directly affects 
um, school funding, um, how we fund growth and falling roles, and and you know what we do with that again will directly um, impact on schools. So that's also something that could be. Uh, can have a direct impact on you. Likewise, we're talking about formalizing premises funding. Um, so again, we're putting out different options and different suggestions in the consultation on what we are going to do with that. Um, so again, for those of you who are currently uh, getting premises funding or would be looking to get it under a direct NFF, you will want to engage with a, a consultation and give your views to it to ensure that it works, uh, that it works well get yeah, and then we've considered all the circumstances that we that we should be considering um minimum funding guarantee as i said is going to continue to operate so here it's more around the sort of more technicalities around exactly how it operates and how it is being calculated which again will directly you know directly impact on on those who are uh, currently funded through uh, through the mfg um, so the, and then I think another another really important aspect is and we're really looking for schools and, and academies in particular to provide feedback is around the annual funding cycle. At the moment, we publish what we call notional NFF allocations together with the, the you know, information on what the formula looks like every July. We recognise that at the moment it's quite difficult for schools to know what to do with that information because how that translates to funding for them depends very much on what the local authority formula looks like in their area. Obviously, from when we have a direct NFF, what we published in July is going to directly impact what you get through the gag without the sort of sidestep of the um, of the local authorities. I mean, it's not going to be your final allocations because your final allocations will depend on the new data that comes in uh, following the October census, but you will know exactly this is what the formula looks like. This is the factor values. So you, if, you know, as soon as you know what your what new pupil data is, then you can effectively yourself find out quite early uh, what your allocations will be. Um, so what we are consulting on here is a little bit sort of what what information would be useful for us to put out for you to be able to use that and understand as much as possible around what your budget the following year is going to be. Because we obviously there is you know, there is limited in terms of how much notice we can give, but but in, within the constraints that we ourselves operate in, we obviously want to make sure that we give you as much early information as possible to help you with your forward planning. So again, we'll plug there to to uh, engage with the consultation and um, uh, and give us give us your inputs and thoughts on what you would find helpful. I've been reeling through this because I was really, <laughs> really uh, conscious that we were uh, starting late. So I, I'm sorry if I've spoken too quickly and that didn't make sense. But I've, I've, I've basically come to the end of the slides already. Um, so very happy to uh, start answering any questions. Thanks, Thanks, Maria. Maria. That, that was that great. Was great. Um, um, just, just to say, say the session, session has been recorded. been recorded. Can you hear me, or is there a back feed? I don't know if you need to go unmute, Maria. Sorry, just for a, just for a moment. So the session is being recorded, so you you'll be able to um, listen back to this, um, and the slides will um, will be available in the chat very shortly. There is a survey at the very end, so I'd appreciate if you could. Um, just take a few minutes to to go through that um, as your, you know, we value your feedback and it does shape these events. Um, it, should we move on to the Q&A, Maria? We've also got Andy Humphreys um, helping helping on that. Do, what, what would you prefer, Maria? Should I read out the most popular questions or what, what's best for you guys? I'm, I'm conscious there's a bit of back feed when, when we're all off mute, but we could try. <laughs> What do you think? Should, should I read the question out and then you you answer it? Does that work? That that works for me. Yeah, and, and, and then okay. I can decide who who takes what. Absolutely, one. absolutely. Um, okay, so so uh, the pop, I'll, I'll go for the most upvoted first. So, what will be the percentage increase for twenty three, twenty four, and twenty five, twenty six? Percentage increase in in what is a big question. The only thing that we have so far is the allocation for the overall core schools budget, and that's what we got through the Treasury. And so you can 
so you could see that the, if you look at the overall course schools budget increased by 4 billion in the first year, and then over the next two years together, it's increasing by 3 billion. So that gives you a sense of the overall size of the core schools budget. But as I said, that funds the schools NFF, so GAG, it also funds high needs, it funds pupil premium and a few other things within that. So I'm afraid I cannot tell you anything about the individual parts of the core schools uh, budget yet. Uh, for 23-24, we will be announcing all the factor values and all the, the increases uh, through the schools on high needs um, in, in July before summer recess as so basically just sort of around the end of term as usual. Thanks, Maria. Um, next one is, will there be a grant to help fund rising energy costs? I have I, obviously rising energy cost is something that we are very aware of and that we are uh, looking at. Uh, there has not been any announcement uh, on on anything on on that as yet. Uh, I, I know there are parts of the departments that are looking at it, but I'm afraid I have nothing I can say at this stage here. Yeah, there was a similar question. Uh, will will the supplementary grant be increased further to cope with the rising costs? So. That's we have not received any additional funding from Treasury. All the money that we have got, we have been allocating out through the supplementary grant. Sure. OK. How will settlements reflect the rapid rise in inflation? It's similar, isn't it's it? The same, it's the same question. At the moment, the money we've got through Treasury is what we're allocating. And I cannot say anything beyond that. Other than that, we are obviously monitoring the situation and will... Um, um, and, and if and when we have something to add on top of that, then then we will come back to you. In the meanwhile, of course, if there are any individual academies that are uh, suffering very, you know, I think the impact is, is not uniform. It's very, very different. It depends on what sort of energy contract you have. And, and, and um, sorry, it's not my area of expertise, but my understanding is that it's really, really, really varies between schools. So if there is an individual academy that is really, really struggling financially because of their individual circumstances, they should, of course, contact ESFA uh, as usual uh, and, and sort of discuss options in, in light of that. that. That's all I can offer at the moment. Um, will the national insurance levy be in the supplementary grant as well? Sorry, the, the, yes, yeah, so the supplementary grant was was meant to cover the cost of the the levy as well as other cost pressures when it was announced. So so it's already included in that. Uh, and, and obviously the whole supplementary grant. So when I say the whole supplementary grant is being real, rolled into the NFF, what I mean is the whole supplementary grant for in respect of five to 16 year olds is being rolled in to the NFF at the moment. The post 16 elements are still being sort of done separately. But yes, all of that, including what, you know, we didn't separate what bit was going for the levy or, or anything else. It was just a total amount uh, for all the Thank pressures you. together. Um, can we be assured that the increase to the gag will be in addition to the supplementary grant that's being rolled yes. out? Yes. yes. Uh, we're very worried about special schools. There is no certainty of supplementary grants from LAs. Yes, again, we are, we are, this is always something that we are uh, looking at and, and we are considering and uh, at this stage, I can't say anything beyond, like next announcement is on high needs is going and special schools is going to be in July uh, when we publish the high needs for 23-24. There are a few on the, um, on that issue actually. Most LAs are using the supplementary grant in high needs to reduce their deficit and not passing it on. So if effectively sec, uh, special and mainstream schools with high net numbers of uh, children with ECHPs are having their funding reduced. So there's a, a couple of um, yeah. couple of those. Um, yeah, no, we, we are very, very aware of pressures on the high need side and and obviously some local authorities having significant deficits on that side. So it is something that we are aware of and that we are definitely keeping under review. Um, and I, and I recognise the feedback. Um, unfortunately, I don't I don't have anything to to sort of to say to solve the issue today. Sure. On that one. Thank you. Um, NFF will only provide certainty for one year. Will you will you address three year budget planning? 
again, it is something that we're always considering. Um, I, we do, of course, we do have the core schools budget that Treasury has given us for the for the next three years. We, we have that and, and schools have that, but ultimately we then have to divide that up between high, high needs and schools and we don't know what's going to happen to pupil numbers and we don't, you know, so it's very difficult for us to set an exact, this is how much funding you're going to get for pupil because we ultimately that could either be way too much and we can't afford it or it could be too little and then we haven't haven't allocated everything we can so it's it's we want to give as much as information as we can within the constraints that we that we face um and we are definitely thinking about what more if anything we can do to give early indication to schools but at this stage um i, I don't think we're about to announce a three-year budget allocation as of tomorrow i'm afraid Okay, thank you. Uh, will any higher pay awards, uh, sorry, will any payer, goodness me, will any higher pay awards above the recommendations earlier this year be covered by additional grants as they have been previously? Couldn't possibly comment on that yet. We have, we don't know what the pay awards are going to be. Uh, so there is, the, yeah, yep. st still very much live negotiations on that one. Will additional grant allocations be announced early enough for academies to include them in their budgets? Well, I don't know if there's going to be any additional grants, so it's very difficult to say. Um, I think it, it, at this stage I can't say. Um, there's another one on SEM funding. Will there be more clarity about the national SEM funding, which is supposed to be included in the GAG? Um, but we don't have that information yet. I think you've said that already. No, so you mean, uh, do you, I wonder if that question is talking about the notional SEN budget. Sorry, you're right. It is notional SEN. And there's a couple of those questions uh, just phrased slightly differently. Yeah. OK, yeah. So obviously the whole, we are reviewing the whole, uh, you know, we got the SEN, send an alternative provision green paper going out. There is a lot of discussion. And, and of course, at the moment, I mean, this is something that is being discussed in the direct NFF consultation at the moment, where we're again looking for feedback uh, on that issue. At the moment, it's local authorities who set the notional send budget. So, of course, if we if we do the direct NFF, it will it will be the DFE who would have to take over that role of setting the notional send budgets because it doesn't make sense for local authorities to do it when they don't do the budget in the first place. And um, so we, that is definitely one of the questions that we are looking at as sort of what would be helpful in in, in that space. Um, so again, very, very welcome, very much welcome feedback um, on that question as part of the consultation. Um, is sports premium funding continuing in 22-23? And if it is, when will the amounts be announced? Andy, I don't think we have an announcement on that yet. Uh, do we? No. No, I believe it's uh, imminent, but I'm not sure exactly when it is. But I know that, you know, lots of people have been asking the question. And people are aware that it needs to be addressed, but it hasn't been uh, it hasn't been released yet. So people haven't missed it, but it's it's imminent. Thanks. OK, based on discussions on pay increases for teachers and support, uh, these could be substantial with additional grants be issued to cover the increase in pay bill and pensions. Sorry, is it, is, is it a question whether we could cover it with additional grant or is it a statement? <laughs> Yeah. It's a it's a question. It sounds like a question. I think there has been a teacher pay grant in the past in previous years, so it's it's clearly something that has been done. But again, we don't know what the teach the pay settlement is going to be. Uh, and before that, we have we have absolutely no. I mean, I I cannot know. I do not know anything around what you know whether or not there would be a grant at all. Um, I think the first thing is to see what happens with actual pay settlement. OK, uh, we have to produce three year budgets, so we need to know what to assume, i.e. 3%, 5% and so on. Otherwise, we are guessing it's uh, they've said it's all a bit tricky. Um, yeah, uh, it, of course it is. Um, Andy, do you want to take this one? Uh, agreed. Acknowledged. 
Um, yes. Um, I mean, the only thing possibly to say is that um, if because the because we work in the in under the auspices of a spending review and you have a time scale for that spending review then we you could provide some certainty but then you have the economic conditions that we're now starting to see and if if the spending review was stuck with then there would be no such thing as the SSG so we tried to have some added flexibility to have some ability to react but understand your point about the operation currently means that a three-year plan would probably be required to be adjusted and uh, returned to quite regularly at the moment. Thanks, Andy. Um, will any funding be provided to help schools implement their decarbonisation plans, which will then help reduce energy costs? Or does this sit with, is that Salix? Is it Salix? I do not know about that, unfortunately. It's not something I am familiar with. Andy, are okay. you familiar with anything on that at no, all? No, I'm afraid no. not. Sorry. OK. Um, will there be additional funding if pay awards exceed the DFS, DFE's offer? Don't know. No comment. No. We don't nothing nothing's been nothing's been decided on that one. Um okay, well sports premium, I think we might have touched on this already. Will sports premium continue next year. Pending an, an imminent yeah. announcement, which is you know, all of the PE and sport ones totally recognise um that people want to know uh an announcement is imminent. Thanks. Um, will the value of free school meals increase in schools? Um, it has remained static for a number of years and it's becoming increasingly difficult to deliver. I presume by that you're talking about universal infant free school meals, because obviously the, the free school deprivation, like free school meal for, for uh, people outside of UIFSM is paid for through the national funding formula and it has been increasing uh every year recently so it is the UIFSM that has remained what it is um um have we not made an or maybe we haven't yet made an announcement on UIFSM for academic year 22-23 if we have not yet made that then I'm pretty sure that will be imminent um, I've just, I've just, uh, the, sorry, I was about to put the link up to the announcement, yep. but a colleague beat me to it, which is very kind. Someone had put a, a UIFSM uh, request question in and a colleague was slightly quicker off the mark than I, um, but a link has been posted. I can put it up again because I have still got it on my screen, um, but, um, and I didn't catch the colleague's name who was quicker than me off the mark, but I shall do that now. Uh, so bear with me a second. Um, UIFSM uh, announcement. There we go. So there's the latest UIFSM. Thanks. Thanks both. Um, OK, next question. Why does the ESFA not send out uniform guidance for schools with regard to core elements of budget funding? It would take a huge amount of guesswork out of the system and provide the ESFA with more consistent forecasts. Andy, I'm, I'm wondering a little bit consistent in, in sorry in what way what is it that we're doing inconsistently and what could we be doing better I'm not I'm not I think it's Maria it's about the um so it says why does the ESFA not send out uniform guidance um because and they're suggesting that we would receive more consistent forecasts if we did oh guidance on what forecast assumption to use um, it says with regard to core elements of budget planning. Okay. We, so, yeah, we don't we don't ring fence what the gag must be. You know, each element of the gag must or must not be spent on. Um, that is for um, particularly trusts, as you know, as independent bodies to um, to decide. There are some elements that are ring fenced, but very little. So, you know, all of those. Um, additional 
need factors are all proxies. So any money that you receive for EAL3 pupils, that does not mean that that money must solely be spent on pupils who attracted that funding. Um, you can, but you don't have to. Um, so it, because they, as I say, they are all proxies. So um, we are saying that schools with a high level of EAL3 pupils are more likely to have pupils with additional need. But that's not to say that all EAL3 pupils require additional need. Um, and you could say that with the IDACI factors and all of the other additional uh, factors in the in the NFF. So we don't prescribe how it's spent um, to give that element of flexibility. OK, um, what value does a three year budget forecast have if the SFA cannot provide any funding information? So there's a few like that. Um, I've just kind of summarised. There's a couple. Uh, I think I'd say see um, previous um, comment that comment someone commented on honesty, if I'm honest. Um, there. It's a requirement and recognising that it's tricky. OK, um, and, and I, th I think oh, I mean, I completely recognise it is very tricky. But ultimately, every school has its own circumstances, its own they like, how you split your spend and how you lay things up. So even if we did do a forecast it, it, or, or set out assumption, it just wouldn't you know, we wouldn't be able to adapt it to different schools and, and their circumstances. So. So I, I, I reckon it is, of course, incredibly difficult, but there are still a number of sources of information out there that you could still go on you are, like by knowing your own budgets and how they've set up and know, you know, seeing what pay negotiate, deciding what you want to do on 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 teacher pay on your side. And you know, that you it can still be an incredibly valuable exercise, I think, even if there is a lot of uncertainty to it, because it can give you some like, it, it, it can definitely give you an idea like given the sort of reasonable assumptions that you can find from from various sources gives you like quite a good idea of um you know are you facing a massive pressure or or is it looking like you're going to face a headroom but yeah but also recognize yes it's very difficult okay uh because some schools might assume a two percent increase in gag and some might assume a five percent increase uh, so the forecasts are not worth much. That that was upvoted um, four times. So I just thought I'd read it out. I don't know if you have a response to that. Um, I think that the, ol the only possible thing, if you want to, you can you can look at the core schools total size of the core schools budget if you want, and 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 see how that is increasing year on year. But again. That depends on how that is then split between schools and high needs. How many pupils there are going to be? People like and and. So it's very difficult, um, but yes, I, I st even even with that, I still think it can still have a value. And it in and then by at least having a forecast, as you see, well, oh, okay, well that assumption was wrong, and you keep updating it when you get new information. That still, I think, can provide some value as well. Okay, um, can allocation tables please include the mat name as a column uh, for the grants? just to make the process uh, easier. That's a, requ that's a, a request, I don't know. Uh, we can certainly take that one away. I know yeah. that we don't release it on um, some of the separate grants, and we certainly don't release it on the main allocations that are published towards the end of the financial year, um, but that shouldn't be a problem to do. We could, I can certainly take that one away and ask that of colleagues for um, some of their grants and we'll certainly look to do that for the main gag allocations grant tables as well. So yes, not a problem with that. It would be what's ever shown on uh, GIAS or GIAS, depending on how you would like to pronounce it, but we'd use that um, front facing name. OK, um, I think this is another sort of um, plea uh, schools are spending lots of time reporting on separate grants, so PP sports, and now and now we've added SL tutoring and COVID recovery funding. So it's it's all very time consuming. So uh, um, that might be something to think about. Yeah, recognise that point. Okay. Um, having the in 
indicative scale points for teachers in good time and over two years was very helpful indeed. Risk to risk of STRB awarding more, but hope DfE would fund. I think that's more yeah. of a yeah. yeah, no, but again, re re recognise what sure. we're talking about that. OK, uh, would it be possible for all grants to be placed in one place rather than having to search for them? Could they be added in on into one signing? Uh, I'll take that one, Gemma. Um, the we do publish allocations and then the separate grants are available at different times in a lot of cases, um, but recognise the, the one place for them all. Um, we do publish at the end of January um, the school and academy level allocations, which is the one I refer to where we would add the we'd look to add the trust details um, and we have added the main grants in there now we didn't add the covid recovery related claims because that's different to grants but um, they are published at the end of january each year and they pull a lot of the grants together so i'll dig out the link for that and drop it in this chat for the 21 22 22 23 won't be available till next january because a lot of the grants aren't announced at school level um, or updated following the October census. So um, yes, I can signpost to where that is um, for 21-22. So colleagues have got a, got a starting point for that. So if you can bear with me on that one, I'll dig that link out. Thanks, Andy. That'd be really helpful. Um, any answer on special school place element? It's been 10K for 10 years, no inflation. We've had no commissioning increase for the last few years either funding isn't moving with the expenditure. Recognise uh, their concern and it is definitely something that we are aware of. We have increased the amount that local authority gets very significantly through the um, high needs budget, but we know that they are facing a number of different pressures that they are all trying to uh, uh, manage with, with that additional money. Um, so it, I can't can't say anything new other than to say that we really really recognise uh, the issue and and the and the concern and ne next time you will get an update on high needs. It's going to be in July. I'm not sure if it's going to include anything on that yet, but it's that's the next time you will get an update. But yet, yeah, just recognise rec recognise this as something that we've heard many times. OK, uh, we know our numbers of pupils, however, not the revenue we will get for them. That's 95 percent of our income. We know the number of staff, we, but not what you agree to pay them. That's 85 percent of our costs. Apart from that, we know everything. So. What you're saying is in terms of advance notice, what would be most helpful? I saw another reference to to Orpu here. So what would be most helpful is some sort of indication. Of uplift to those to basically to the main factors. And, and then advance notice of pay is basically what you are. I think we are hearing. I think it, it is it is useful to to hear it and we are definitely thinking of if there is anything we possibly can can do to help and give more advance notice. And so it is useful to hear which, which bits you think would be most helpful. OK, next question. Um, it says even just a rough set of assumptions for percentage increase on AWPU and pay yeah. points would save everyone reinventing the wheel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, is there any signs of a support staff long term plan for salaries like STRB um, have done for teaching April 21 NJC uplift only just agreed to make so make only just agreed to makes budgeting incredibly challenging and speculative? I'm afraid that's not an area that I am familiar with. I don't know, Andy, if you are. No, no sorry. Sorry. OK, um, we cannot make key spending decisions for two year, two and three years when there is n n so much uncertainty. Yeah. Uh, we can have the rest of the budget, but if we don't know the funding, um, should we make people redundant? Yes, we have indicators of pupil numbers, etc., but it becomes a futile exercise. Yeah. 
project. I think it's a level of frustration around that. Um, yeah. Yeah. Not being able to spend PE sport grant on capital items is making it difficult to spend this grant on sustainable activities for our schools. The guidance feels contradictory. That's useful feedback. We can yeah. send that back, I think. OK, thank you. Uh, will there be a recovery premium and tutor led funding as additional grants in 22, 23 and beyond? So recovery premium, uh, definitely 22, 23. That has been announced. Uh, I should really know this uh, as well, but I thought tutoring was also going ahead in 22, 23, but I can't remember exactly what's been announced and not can I? Andy, do you happen to know, or I will see if I can see if they quickly get a hold of someone too. I don't know for recovery. I was just looking at a question by uh, Mrs Chisnell about why different grants run for different time periods. Um, it's partially because they are for a specific year and we wouldn't want uh, Academy Trust to be waiting an additional five months to have them. I get that that is contradictory to the gag position, um, but they are a smaller percentage of your overall uh, financial um, payments. And uh, the supplementary grant obviously is that for Academy Trust will be a 17 month grant rather than a 12 month one. So we recognise that um, different period until it gets uh, mainstreamed into the gag in the following year as we've as we've mentioned. So um, us calculating these grants for different timelines, uh, there's several colleagues who would like them all to be for the same time period, I can assure you. <laughs> Thanks, the Andy. Link, the linking with local authorities being paid on a, an April to March basis is, and obviously with their, their other accounts as well, um, adds further complication into that discussion. Um, Sorry, okay. on, on the tutoring, I've been told that it is continuing in 22-23 and a colleague will find a link that I will paste in the chat bar on that one. Great, thank you. Uh, we need our funding to increase with the line uh, in line with inflation currently at 9.1%. Yeah. Um, okay. Sorry, Can yes, not as in yes, I promise you will get it, but yes, as in no. <laughs> it's like, acknowledged. So yeah. you're, yes. OK, uh, academy accounting is far more complex uh, than for schools with no apparent reason. Why not just give us all our full year allocation details and then allocate monthly? We spend a ridiculous amount of time doing accruals for grants that come in at random times. Andy? Sorry, can you repeat that one, Gemma? I was looking at another question. Oh, OK, um, it says um, Academy accounting is far more complex uh, than for schools with no apparent reason. Why not just give us our full year allocation details and then allocate monthly? We pay monthly, if that's what the colleague means. The remittance shows how that's calculated and ties in with the actual gag allocation. Um, the accounting bit um, if there's queries and questions about um, uh, budget returns and so forth in terms of their complexity um, that if you've got some feedback then I'm absolutely sure that provider market oversight colleagues would be very keen to hear from you about them um, but <clears throat> unfortunately uh, essentially um, we deliver on the policies that Maria and colleagues work with ministers to come up with uh, and tell you how much you've got but then the finance side in terms of how you spent it is not, I I wouldn't want to comment further because I don't know enough about it, I'm afraid. And that's kind of an explanation of what the difference between funding and finance is as well. We'll give you how we'll tell you how much you've got and they'll tell you, make sure that you've allocated it and spent it ac accurately. Right, OK, got you, Sarah. Um, yes, gag is paid monthly, but other people, uh, but people in other gags, yes, they're paid termly or quarterly. Uh, and um, yes, the difference with looked after children as well is to ensure that um, the funding is absolutely spent for those uh, or allocated for those pupils in one place. So a reason also why they looked after children 
factor was taken out of the NFF because that money was moved into the pupil premium for looked after children. So it could be um, essentially it was ring fenced for those children, whereas while it stayed in the gag, it didn't have to be spent on those on those specific children. Thanks, Andy. There's something that's just come in. So that question on accounting is in reference to UIFSM PP DFCG paid at certain times of the year. Standard accounting practice requires accruals, prepayments for this. So they want all lines of funding paid every month. OK, noted. Thank you. I think that's all of the upvoted questions, actually. <laughs> So I think, I think we've we've answered. I, I hope we've answered all of them. Um, yeah, that looks like all of them. So thanks very much, everybody, for joining today. Um, if you could just, there should be a question, uh, a little survey being popped into the chat very shortly. If you could just um, take that. I think it's like a thirty-second um, sort of job. If you could just give us some feedback because it helps shape, you know, the the power hours that we we do. Um, on a monthly basis. So thank you all for your time today. Thank you to Maria and to Andy uh, for presenting today as well. Yeah. No, and and just to say on the on the feedback, it's it's always difficult to know exactly where to pitch how much prior knowledge people have and exactly which bit they're interested in. So anything that you could give in terms of would it have been useful to have the presentation covering something else or a different level of knowledge, etc., would be su super helpful. As much Thanks, as everyone. I say. I ha can't can't help you on some of some of the comments. We do want to be as helpful as we, we can, at least. <laughs> Indeed, Th thank you so much. Uh, the the session is being recorded. I, I saw somebody ask that the session is has been recorded and the slides are now in the chat, so you can go back and and, and rewatch this. Thanks, everybody.